If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please consider hitting the like button. It really does help the video out, even if I don't deserve it because I'm terrible at video games. And if you want to follow me on Twitter for absolutely no reason, the link for that is down below. If you do need any coins, head over to u7buystore.com. Use the code TVM at checkout for a discount. The link is in the description. What is going on guys, Tivim here, welcome back to another FM22 video. We are Brentford and we are masters of the 1-0, apparently. Um, last time we we went out and we deployed the most boring defensive tactic against Hoffenheim, but it worked. We beat them 1-0 at their place and then we drew 0-0 at our place with through to the next round, which we will play in just a second against Stuttgart. We then uh, went into the game against Stoke. I mean, the league is just as important as the Europa League now. In fact, the league is probably more important to me than the Europa League because we are very close to obtaining Champions League football for the season. But I've got eyes on the Europa League because I would actually really like to win the Europa League given that we've made it to the quarter final. We don't have a squad good enough to be playing both European and Premier League football at such a high level. So I'm rotating heavily. We're having to go out defensively and trying to nick goals. We have very good strikers. You wouldn't know it from looking at the the scores because we only score one or two goals a game maximum. However... We are set up to defend, soak up as much pressure as possible, and then just nick one goal here or there. It's not the most entertaining thing in the world to watch, but it's effective. Uh, this game here, oh my days, I'm so annoyed at myself. So, I actually, I made three mistakes playing this game. Well, I made three mistakes before I even went into the game. So, against Stoke, I rotated heavily because I knew we had Chelsea next and I knew we had the European games. And, of course, we still have Man City, Spurs and Liverpool to play, which is not going to be straightforward. So, against Stoke, I heavily rotated. Kalulu came in at the back. Bastoni came in instead of um, Barisic. Milner came in into the midfield instead of Jorginho. And who else? Dest came in instead of Mbabu. And I think that was probably about it for the rotation side of things. Oh, Jorginho played. I think he might come off the bench. I'm not quite sure. Either way, when I went into the Chelsea game, completely forgot that I rotated that heavily and ended up starting the game with James Milner as a central midfield player, who incidentally did quite well. Um, Dest played on the right-hand side instead of a Babu, and Bastoni started instead of Barisic. Not ideal, because those are three very influential players that are now not playing and we have replacements in there. Milner was probably the biggest surprise to me because he actually held his own. He played as a box-to-box -box in the centre of midfield and he, he did quite well. I, I didn't have any complaints with him. As soon as I took him off, we actually started to uh, see a bit of pressure come up upon us. But the thing that annoyed me most about this game was the fact that we went 1-0 up just before the break. I then clicked start the second half. Looked away from the screen. for It, it can't have been more than 25 seconds. 20 seconds max. There was I was... There was a video on, basically, and it got to a point where I was like, what? And I started watching it, and I forgot what was happening. It was literally about 20 seconds. I look back, it's the 88th minute. I press pause, and as I press pause to just shut up shop for, for the last two or three minutes, a highlight started. Right, well, I won't shut up shop yet, because we need to find out what's happened to this highlight, because obviously it won't take place until after the highlight. So, press play, and yeah, they scored. So... It's my fault we didn't win that game. If we'd beaten Chelsea, the league would look far different now. But um, hey-ho, that's the way it goes sometimes. So uh, Stoke are relegated with nine points uh, with, uh, with six games to go, which is just, I mean, it's shocking how bad the bottom three have done this season. It really is. There's, there's absolutely no competition down there at all. It's just straight down. The competition at the top, though, Heating up. Man United, Liverpool fighting it for the title as they have been for the last three seasons. And we are in the mix for Champions League. I don't think we're in any position to consider catching Liverpool. We need to try and maintain third or fourth. The amount of teams who can challenge for fourth, though, is actually quite worrying. I would say anyone down to Man City is in the running 
for fourth place. We are three points clear of Chelsea. Arsenal have a game in hand which would put them one point behind us. And we also have to play Man City. We have to play Liverpool. And we have to play Spurs before the end of the season. We have not got a very good run at all. In terms of the tactics that are about to go into the game against Stuttgart with, this is what it looks like. We're going to play balanced. Um, now nah, we're going to play cautious. We're home for the first game, actually. So let's go. Let's go balanced. Um, no, like focus down at either flank. We're just going to go for it uh, and and see what happens. Let the team do their thing. This is what we do. D counter attack. Of course, we we try and regroup when we lose the ball. We don't want to counter press. People are going to be out of position and stuff. We're not really built for it. And then. While we're out of position, we are forcing our opponents inside. We have a higher defensive line, a standard line of engagement, and we are using the offside trap, which has worked for us quite well, given the fact that our defenders are fairly quick. I mean, not super fast, 15. Godfrey was on the decline last time I looked. Oh, he's on the up now. Uh, so, again, he's not super fast. He does have 18 pace, to be fair, but 15 acceleration. And Osifo is the fastest defender that we have. Uh, 17 acceleration our three center backs I mean I don't want to jinx it but ugh, fantastic uh, Rafinha okay Rafinha has not been doing too well for us recently I've, I've actually been reluctant to play him a lot of the time he's not played an awful lot of football in recent weeks because he's just not very good in this in the setup that we have he may end up moving on to be honest in the summer because he just doesn't suit the way that I play. We we do sometimes go with a, like left left wing right wing kind of setup, but for the most part, it's only um it's only something that I do if I'm desperate trying to get a goal or we try and retain a little bit more possession or something. It, it's not really a go to tactic, and I don't feel like we we need him. I I honestly think I'm wasting his career at this point because he's just not doing. What, what, he's not fulfilling his potential because we don't play him in the position he, he needs to be playing in. Anyway, uh, first 10 minutes here, we have a highlight. And it's, I mean, look at the space from Babu there. Can he put a ball into the box? Doesn't even try. If I sound funny, by the way, I, honestly, how I've not got COVID is, is beyond me. I feel awful. Um, I keep doing lateral flow tests and they keep coming back negative. Maybe it's just a cold. I know I'm not a call for like three years. I don't think anyone has, to be honest. But um, yeah, it's one of those things. Throat's killing me. Whew, struggling, to be honest. But um, we are in the middle of a quarterfinal. We can't complain. Ball whipped in by Pascal Gross by the looks of things. And Endo has headed it into the back of the net. We are 1-0 down in the quarterfinal of the Europa League against Brentford. Now, I'm not going to panic. Because we are capable. It's a good header. We're capable of coming back from this. I'm not going to change anything just yet. It is Pascal Gross as well. Uh, we are going to just keep it the way it is. Encourage the boys and see if we can work it out from the back. If we go 2-0 down or we get into the second half and nothing's really changed, that's when we make a change and that's when we try and just, I don't know, Go for it a little bit more, I guess. If we lose this game and we go into the second leg, I'm not going to be cautious. I'm going to play like we're playing Stoke in the league. Adiemi through the middle. That is, by his standards, a sitter. And he has missed it. We have more possession. They've had one shot on target. And we are not making it count right now. Which is the story of our season, if I'm honest. Because we've had... I, I should go and look at things like, you know, t team possession and stuff like that. But... I keep forgetting to do it. I do it on my own time. I just don't know if anyone really wants to see it. But we have a very high possession rate and we do hold the ball really well. We just don't score anywhere near as many goals as I think we probably should. So, uh, it's the end of the first half and we haven't really responded too well, if I'm honest. So what can we do? I'm tempted, you know, to move things around a little bit so pressing forward attack Fernino is going to come on here for Jorginho Ooh, don't know if that's the right decision and that is what's going to happen there advanced playmaker uh, Declan Rice is going to move up into that central midfield role he's going to be a defender we are going 
to yeah we're gonna leave it at that um I think I'm happy with the way that that works. Let, that's how it, that's how we normally set up if we're playing someone I feel like we're better than, right? So if we do that, maybe we start to see a little bit more bite up front. Let's try and fire the team up a little bit. We're not really creating an awful lot. I, I would imagine that they've set up to defend in this game because they are away from home. They're doing what we did to Hoffenheim, essentially. Uh, we need to take off... Well, they still take off on Babu, but I don't really see that he's... No, we don't need to take anyone off. 66 minutes, though. We, we do need to change something. We're not doing enough. Is it time to bring on Rafinha? And maybe do the whole wide system? Do you know what? I'm going to... I'm going to take off... I'm going to take off Godfrey. Against my better judgment, to be honest. But, um... Ball playing defender, ball playing defender cover, and I'm going to bring on Rafinha. This is a really weird move, but I'm going to do it anyway. Inside forwards out here. Uh, we're going to go on positive, and I'm also going to go down both flanks. That leaves us open, fully away. Uh, but, you know... Risk-taking is uh, something that you sometimes have to do when you're chasing a game. Can we please wake up a little bit? No? Anyone? Osifo is knackered. Uh, they've, well, we have a highlight. Someone has a highlight. I am probably going to take off Osifo because he's injured. And we'll bring on Kalulu. And here is the highlight. Nope, it's gone. Fantastic. We've had seven shots. Oh, we've not. I mean, on target, we've had 15 shots in total. If we can get a draw here, I will be very pleased given the circumstances. But it does go to show. Ball played in. Nino is there. Referee comes over. Not celebrating until I see VAR has awarded it because he did look a little bit offside. But then again, the ball looked level. So I'm not sure. This is probably going to be disallowed. Oh, it's been awarded. Get in. I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to leave it. I'll tell you why. Because we've been doing much better stats-wise since I changed that. And, of course, it, we got our goal back. But it does go to show, yeah, I was going to say, the ball looked level. Because he's in an offside position, but the ball is level, so it doesn't matter. So, yeah. They've only had one shot. Even though we've gone down to two centre-backs, they've only had one shot. Touch wood, because they're about to counter this highlight and score, no doubt. But, um... It, it does give me confidence to go into this second leg and play a little bit more attacking. I feel like our team is much better than I give them credit for in terms of I set up in a defensive... Oh, hello. Lag spike. No idea what's happened, but it's ended up with Talis Magno in on goal. And the referee's coming over to look at it again. Of course he is. He might have been offside. I don't know what happened. The whole thing chugged. He's looking at VAR. He's asking the question, and he's awarded the goal. I tell you what, I'm an absolute tactical genius. Ball played forward. We're going to get to see what actually happened. Little flick. Can dog be through the middle? Boom. I mean, that is a cultured finish if ever I've seen one. Tapped it into the bottom corner. Played FIFA the other day. I know. Why? Uh, but I played against... Uh, oh, look at that. The, the right back keeping him on. I played against uh, a team in squad battles, and they had Talis Magno in the midfield. I was so proud to see him out there. Every time he had the ball, I smiled. Anyway, we've just beaten Stuttgart two goals to one. They've had two injuries. But we have come from behind in the final four minutes to win that game. But the, the, the takeaway from this is this here in the top uh, left. 19 shots, 10 on target, 2 XG. More corners, more fouls, sure. But the possession as well, 94% pass accuracy. We played reasonably well, didn't really give much away. When I switched it to go more attacking, we were just relentless and they couldn't cope. They didn't really muster anything, even when we went to two centre-backs. So I am, I'm not going to start that way against them away from home, but I am feeling 
Maybe we play a little bit more attacking, although now we don't need to because we are winning, but I feel like we could easily play more attacking. So, rather frustratingly, almost a carbon copy of what happened against Chelsea. Drew against Man City. It doesn't leave us in a terrible position in the league. It was just one of those I felt like we, we should have won it. 74th minute, I was, again, just starting to think about shutting up shop. We were about maybe, I don't know, three, four, five minutes away max from me going a little bit more defensive and wasting time, etc. But um, Jack Grealish from a set piece tapped it in. Defence kind of shut off a little bit. We had, before that, we had two clear-cut chances to put the game to bed. Uh, Rafinha missed a one-on-one -on -one and Adiemi missed. I wouldn't even say Adiemi missed a one-on-one. -on -one. He missed an open goal. The goalkeeper moved so far over to the left and he was right in front of him. He moved his, to his left. The gap to, to just slot the ball in was huge and he kicked it straight at the keeper. Fantastic. Um... Stuttgart up next, though. League table, before we move into that Stuttgart game, uh, because it is, it's getting to that point now where you need to look at it after every single game is played. Chelsea beat Arsenal three goals to nil, which has just dumped them, I wouldn't say out of the Champions League race, but it's put them in a far worse position than they were in before we started the video. We are a point above Chelsea. Obviously, Liverpool and, and United are just out there we we can't look at them but third is the best we can do which is perfectly fine by me I wasn't expecting to be anywhere near this strong toward the end of the season if you if you'd show me the league table and said look with five games to go this is where you'll be I would have 100% taken it so all three teams relegated with five games left to go in fact they were relegated with six or seven games left to go Stoke have been relegated since the start of the season so um it's all to play for in that from, uh, what, 8th place all the way up to 3rd. It's, it's all to play for in terms of Europa League, Champions League and such. I think we're pretty much guaranteed European football, bar a um, complete meltdown. So at least we'll have some sort of European football. But we have a game that I'm treating a little bit differently, you know. Um, probably shouldn't be doing what we're doing here because you know we've got the lead we don't necessarily need to go for this I'm not going for it as such but I'm playing a little bit more attacking with half an eye on being able to just you know shut up shop Kondogbia will come in for Van der Beek um, Kondogbia didn't play against Man City incidentally because he was a little bit too fatigued Ossipo comes back in he had a knock but um, everyone else looking tip-top shape, couple of yellow cards knocking about the place, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't, but we'll see what happens here, I'm not too bothered by the yellow card situation, if someone gets suspended for the next round, it is what it is, you know, we're just gonna go into this we're on balanced which is exactly where I want to be as soon as we went a little bit attacking in that last game they could not cope, they, they didn't have an answer, so my hope is that we can just go a little bit more attacking Show them who we are, get a goal, and it should be done and dusted. Kippers and custard, as they say. And Babu nicks the ball. Here's Fernino into Teles Magno. Both back through to him, maybe? No, goes out to Mbabu. I would have maybe looked to play it back through to Fernino, actually. He looked like he was in a, a good position on side. Here's Teles Magno. Plays a good ball through to Rafinha, who takes one touch too many. Gets chopped down. Referee says play on. They did have a guy on the sidelines who looked injured. Tell it's Magno with a header. This Fernino keeper somehow makes a double save even though he's on the floor. They had someone went off injured a second ago. I'm guessing they didn't make the sub. Uh, but um, they had two injuries in the first leg. Kind of hoping. There he is. Kind of hoping that's sort of been carried over and they've, they've not been able to play. Because obviously they would have been first team players. Here's Tellez Magno has been tripped. Luckily, we've got enough about us to uh, maintain possession. Here's Fernino. Needs some support. There's Teles Magno. Oh, it's a, it looked like an awful effort, but it just went wide. Goalkeeper was worried. That's why he dived. That rhymed. Corner. Barisic with an outswinger. There's Nianzu. There's the goal. We don't score many corners anymore, but when we do, they are big goals. 1-0 away from home. And dare I say, we're actually playing quite well. We've had a fair few chances early doors, so I'm not 
going to change anything because I don't feel like we need to. I honestly think we can get another couple here. Not that we need to, but I think we're playing well enough. If we concede, don't know. Um, that, that, that's, yeah, if we concede, that, that really does give me a bit of a headache. Ball through. Oh, my days. I mean, you can't do anything about that. That is a goal. <laughs> that is a goal. Um, what, three minutes? Two, three minutes after we scored, they've just hit a worldie. I'm not going to change anything. I was going to say, or trying to say, I mean, that's outrageous. Uh, if we concede, it does leave us in a bit of a precarious position because what do you do? We're still winning 3-2. Do we? There's no point defending because we're in exactly the same situation we were at the start of the game. You might as well just leave it the same and hope for the best. I, I would encourage. I'm not going to yet because we have a highlight. If I click encourage and we score on this highlight, the, they'll be very confused. Uh, here's Fernino. Ball around the outside. Declan Rice trying to bundle his way through. Can't quite do it. Ball played long. And their injured player is costing them a little bit here. Ball over to Fernino. Oh, culture. Absolute culture. He might be offside, if I'm honest, because it did look a little bit um, touch and go. Referee's going to look at it because he looks at everything we do. We're always under the microscope. It's been awarded. What a goal that was. The injured player there just does not run for it, probably because he can't. Declan Rice plays a great ball over, and Fernino, I mean, that is what was missing against City. If Adi Amy had done that against the goalkeeper, rather than kick it straight at him, we would be clear in the league right now. He is well onside. Oh, that, I, do you know what? I love that. Love it. And he does it quite a lot, Fernino, as well. 2-1 up, then. Can we not concede another goal? Pascal Gross on the corner, over the bar. That guy who scored that long shot, I'm going to have to take a look at him because that's he's um, he's getting close. Is he worth buying? <laughs> is what I'm thinking. Half time. Can we please see this out? A semi-final would be very nice. And Babu needs to come off. Do you know what? Going to do it straight away. Thank you. Half an hour to go. Declan Rice for Jorginho is a recommended sub because he's one yellow away from a suspension. Don't worry about stuff like that here. We will... I mean, to be fair, we're... they're not doing anything, are they? They're really not. We're two goals clear. They're not doing anything. 20 minutes to go. Let's shut the shop. Uh, tell his Magno to come off, I think. Jorginho to come on, possibly. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll take him off. Rice can go CDM. But Donny van der Beek will come on and we'll swap those two around. <sighs> Top IQ. We'll move Rafinha in here. Play him as a shadow striker. We'll take off force play down the left. Uh, we'll go into defensive. We're, we won't waste time just yet. Although we will drop down the pass in so we just keep the ball a little bit better. And I think that's probably what we're going to do. We've made all three subs. We are two goals clear. We are looking to just see it out now. As soon as we get to the final 10 minutes. Oh. We have a corner. Barisic ball in. Osifo can't quite get his head on it. Here's Maitland-Niles. Hasn't played a lot of football for us recently. He's just given the ball away. It's my fault he's not played an awful lot. I, I didn't... When you sign players in this game, I just you just have to assume you're going to get injuries. And I, I assume we were going to get them. And we haven't had them in the area I thought we were going to get them. That guy, Ganvola has gone through again and, and nearly caused me more problems. I don't think they're going to score off this, so let's go to wasting some time frequently. Not all the time. We don't want to get yellow cards for, for pointless reasons, but uh, ball comes in cleared. Koulibaly to toss it back in, maybe. No, here's Bruno Costa, and that's offside. Ten minutes to go. Looking to waste a bit more time now. We are touching distance of a semi-final and I think we're going to do it now because there's not that much time left unless they really do throw everything at us they haven't done we've won the game away from home we won the the first leg as well four goals to two on aggregate it I mean it wasn't comfortable but it definitely wasn't that difficult which is uh, which is nice Leeds are through against Spartak Moscow Leon have beaten Atletico Bilbao and Monaco have knocked out Atletico Madrid which is probably the um the biggest surprise of of the whole thing we've received 1.5 million we get leon in the next round so if 
somehow we overcome Leon, which I don't think we'll be able to do. But then again, I did think we were going to get knocked out to the other two teams. If we can overcome Leon, now in my opinion, the strongest team left in the competition, we will likely face Monaco. But you never know. Could be an all English final if Leeds can make it through. That, my friends, is going to do it for today's episode. Believe it or not, we're going to come back for a semi-final of the Europa League. We will definitely be keeping an eye on the Premier League, though. Up next is Reading. We, I mean, drop points against Reading, Burnley or Newcastle. And it is all she wrote. We'll probably give up fourth place. So we need to beat those three teams and hope that we can get draws against Spurs and Liverpool. Obviously, we're going to go for the win, but Liverpool in particular very strong team let me know if you thought of that episode in the comment section down below if you have enjoyed it though hit the like button subscribe to the channel and until the next time goodbye